Hey everyone, welcome back to the Bedroom Renovation Part 3. I want to welcome all of our new subscribers as we gained about a thousand over the past two weeks, so I just want to recap Parts 1 and 2. In first part, as you saw, I tore out the popcorn ceiling, and then in Part 2, I removed all of the carpet and all of the padding, and then we removed all of the wallpaper and skim-coated all of the walls to get rid of that residue that was left on by the wallpaper. We then primed and painted the ceiling as well as all the walls a nice green. And in today's video, we're going to be getting into how to wire in new electrical. Let's get to it. So here's a 3D rendering of what the room will eventually look like. And as you can see, we have wall sconces flanking either side of the bed, as well as beneath that was going to be an outlet for each side, as well as a switch that controls the light above it. And we're also going to have a new ceiling light in the ceiling. Let's get to it. I've actually never done this before. I've done a lot of outlet and switch replacements, but never actually running new electrical line. However, I've done a lot of research, so I'm pretty excited to tackle this project. So this is gonna be a new challenge for me, but I'm really excited to get going. So let's get started. So the first step is marking out the two electrical double gang boxes, which will house both the switch as well as the outlet. And here I'm using an old work box, which means it's used for renovation like purposes where you don't have access to the wall behind it. I find an oscillating tool cuts drywall the best and has the most precision, however a drywall saw will also work. After that I went ahead and marked out where the holes are going to go for the wall sconces and I just used the old work box to draw my circle. And they do make hole saws for this specific purpose, however I don't have one so I just use my oscillating tool. Alright so I just finished cutting the holes for the two game outlet and switches on either side of the bed as well as where the light fixture will go up above. So now I have some 12-2 wire that I'm gonna run from here down to here that will be used for the switch. Then after that, I'm gonna drill some holes through the studs. As you can see, I got about three studs on either side that I'm gonna have to drill through. And so I'll drill through those and then I'll run a wire from each of these two game boxes back to the center outlet right here. And that's where all the power will come from. So now let's get started. All right, so now I need to run the electrical lines from either outlet to the middle here. And I was gonna strategically place some holes to go around the studs. The studs are those vertical lines in black Sharpie. And I thought these would be strategically placed that I can drill through the stud and feed the wire through. Uh, but I realized I think it's gonna be a lot easier just to cut one big rectangle out all the way across because this wall will eventually be covered with a headboard as well as a concrete patch. Um, and so you're really not going to even see any drywall and I don't really need to do a lot of work on repairing the drywall. I can just screw it back in and leave kind of the seams as they are. So I'm going to take my oscillating tool and just kind of a big rectangle. I think it'll make it a lot easier installing the electrical and there's not much cleanup work after the fact. So let's get to it. After all the wires were properly fed through, I could then install the old work boxes permanently. So I just stuck the wire through the old work box before installing, then pushed it into position, and then you just use your screwdriver or a drill to initiate the wings on the back side that will clamp it into position up against the drywall. I also wanted to test my work, so I just hooked up a spare light bulb just to make sure that the outlet and switch were working properly. Beautiful. Then it was time to provide power to everything, and this is where it does get a little bit complicated, however it's not as bad as you might think. So I have my two wires coming in from either side, and there's going to be a ground, a black, and a white for each of those. And there's also a ground, a black, and a white going into the outlet, which is our power source. So what you want to focus on is making sure that all three black wires are connected, all three ground wires are connected, and all three white wires are connected. Sometimes the outlet has enough spaces on it to do that each individually, or you can group them all together and then have one line feeding to the outlet. I then installed the switch and outlet on either side of the bed, and in order to do this, I had the power coming in from the center outlet that we just installed into the outlet on the right hand side here, and then I had the power going from that outlet up to the light, and I put a switch in the middle of that line. If you have any questions on this, please leave them in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. Alright, it was a pretty successful day. We got both lights working on their switches, and both of the outlets work as well as the original outlet, and they're all changed the decor style. 
So yeah, pretty pretty excited. I was wondering how this was gonna go, but everything went relatively smoothly. Now I just need to patch up the vapor barrier and then reinstall the drywall just over top of that with some screws, and then we're pretty much all done with this wall. And then tomorrow I'll get started on the ceiling light and running that new line. Let's get to it. I patched up the vapor barrier with some Tyvek house wrap tape, and then I reinstalled the drywall sections that I had taken out originally. I try and preserve these as it's a lot easier just to reinstall the same piece than have to cut a whole new one. And then I mudded and taped the seams to repair the drywall fully. So next up was the ceiling light, and this used to be an always on fan, so we need to switch it to now have a switch near the door. So we have to run a cord from that hole over to this wall, and then down to this switch box. So we're going to have to find a way to feed it through. We have an HVAC return here, and we also luckily have an HVAC return on this side, so hopefully we can use those to our advantage. Alright, so as you saw, I'm trying to run an electrical line from the center of this room on the other side of this wall this way and then down this wall and then over to a switch on the inside of that door and I'm trying to minimize the drywall damage as much as possible. And so we happen to have an HVAC return right here. So my plan is to use this right angle attachment on the drill and a 16 inch spade bit to drill through the top plate of this wall. So as you can see here, I can feed it up and I can drill then through the top plate like that. And the top plate's basically resting right here and if I can drill through that, I should be able to then feed the cord into the room that way, at least I hope so. So let's get to it. And since this is an HVAC return, I made a little duct tape ramp to catch all the dust. Then after cutting the hole through the top plate, I was able to feed the wire into the room and I cut a little four by four inch access panel to help me feed it all the way to the center of the room. Now that we have the wire fed through the ceiling, it's time to go through the wall and I just had to cut through about two studs and I just used these HVAC returns as access points to do so. I attached a headlamp up here to provide a little bit of light so I can see a little bit better as I feed this. Woo! I then installed the old workbox in the ceiling and this was done in a similar fashion to the ones I already did on the wall and then I hooked up another light just to make sure that everything was working properly. I then had to fill in this access hole that I had cut earlier, so I just stuck a piece of wood up there as blocking, and then I put in the piece that I had originally cut out, and then just screwed it into place and mudded over it. All right, the moment of truth. Let's go! All right, so that wraps up all the electrical work in this room. I'm really happy this went all according to plan. I've never ran new electrical lines before, so this was a bit of a challenge, a little bit nervous, but it was extremely rewarding to see it all work and troubleshoot it and figure it out. And so I really pride myself on this one. And I think in future uh, projects, I'm gonna be a lot more comfortable handling, handling more electrical work. Next week in part four, we're going to be doing a custom concrete accent wall. So stay tuned for that and get subscribed. And I hope you guys enjoy this video and learn something along the way. And if you have any questions about any of the things that we covered, please leave them down in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week.